This happened back when I was 17. There was a Walmart close to my high school, so sometimes I'd go there with my friends after the last class of the day. We'd browse the clothes racks and test the makeup out on the back of our hands. One of my friends, Lori, developed a crush on a guy that worked there. We knew from his name tag he was named Chris, and he looked about 20-ish and had this messy brown hair. Because of this, she wanted to go there every day, and at first, she insisted I tag along with her. Some days Chris wouldn't be there, and on these occasions, we just bought something from the snack aisle and left. But during the times he was there, I would watch her linger close to him and do her best to get his attention. I didn't understand why Lori liked this Chris guy so much. He seemed kinda awkward, and there was more than one occasion where I caught him staring at either Lori or me in a really weird way. One time, I even noticed him take a picture of her on his phone when she wasn't looking. I told her about it, but she said it wasn't a big deal as she'd done the same. She even sent me a side picture of Chris stocking the shelves. After that, she stopped asking me to go with her to the store, and instead, she went alone. She was always checking her phone and smiled whenever she read a text, but whenever I asked her if it was Chris, she got really shady about it and always changed the subject. I don't know, I just felt like something didn't seem right. So one day after school I followed her. It didn't surprise me when she went into Walmart. I went in after her but I couldn't find her anywhere, even though I checked every aisle twice. I figured that, given the massive size of the place, I must have just kept missing her. I decided to pick up some chips and leave when my phone beeped. It was from Lori and simply said, Help! I instantly had this uncomfortable feeling. Lori wasn't the type of person to send a message like that as a joke. I tried calling her, but her phone went straight to voicemail. At this point, I didn't know what to do. So I walked to the customer service desk and asked the woman there if Chris was working today, as I was worried about my friend and thought he might know where she was. She said his name across the speaker and a blonde man in a Walmart uniform walked over to the desk. His name tag said Chris. This was not the same Chris Laurie had been talking about. I had the picture on my phone of him, so I showed it to them, and they both gave confused looks, and then the woman called the manager. He asked to see the picture. I showed it to him, and he insisted that the guy in the picture didn't work there. I explained about my friend and the message, and the manager led me to the surveillance room. I told the security guard in there what time I saw Lori walk in, and he played back some surveillance footage. Finally, I spotted her. I watched as she walked through the store and went over to the girl's clothing section. It looked like she was talking to someone, but whoever it was, was in a blind spot on the camera. Then suddenly, I saw arms stretch out and pull Lori forward. I kept on watching with my heart pounding uncontrollably, but she didn't reappear. One of the security guards hurried over to that aisle to see what was going on. He found her crouching behind a pile of coats, her phone clutched in her hands. When they led her to the security room, I flung my arms around her but she remained ridged. She had no signs of physical assault or anything, but it was clear from her reaction that something disturbing had happened to her. The guards eventually found the footage of the guy leaving. He just strolled out of there in his uniform and fake name badge without a care in the world. I watched Lori stare at the footage, and as she did, there was no mistaking the fear in her eyes. She chewed on her nails as she watched it and refused to say anything. Lori's family came to pick her up, and that's the last time I ever saw her. The next week she moved schools without any warning. I tried texting her, but she never replied. I haven't been in that Walmart since. To this day, I don't know why that guy went to such effort to fake working there, or what he said to freak Lori out so much. Or even worse, what sort of intentions he had if his plan had worked out. I guess it'll always be something that haunts me, and that I'll never truly know the answer to. During my time in college, I worked part-time at Walmart to help pay for my tuition. I didn't particularly enjoy working there as the place seemed a beacon for plenty of idiotic customers. This is why I picked up night shifts where I could, as this way, I could stack the shelves without being disturbed by members of the public. On this particular overnight shift, I was working 10pm till 6am, so when I started, 
there were only a couple of customers left in the store. I was in the snack food section, unpacking bags of chips and candy from the pallet stacker, when I saw this couple coming toward me. They both looked to be in their 60s and were dressed in a formal black dress and a black suit. I figured they'd been at a funeral or something. The woman was pushing a cart and grabbed all the bags of potato chips and threw them into it. I just ignored them and carried on with what I was doing. I was used to weirdos coming in here, especially during the late shift. Then I felt a tap on my shoulder and turned to see that man smiling at me. I asked him how I could help and he wanted to know where the candy bars were. I was literally standing next to the shelf full of them, so I pointed to them. As I did this, I noticed that the woman he was with wasn't there anymore. He took ages peering at the shelf, but didn't take any candy and eventually left with the cart. By this time, it was almost closing time, and the announcement sounded over the speaker asking customers to please go to checkout. I presumed the woman had already left, so I didn't think much more of this. I was about to unload the last of the items from the pallet when I noticed the floor manager rushing toward me. He seemed pretty frantic and said he needed me to show one of the new staff something. I thought this was strange, as there weren't that many of us on shift and none of us were that new. But I nodded and followed him. He led me into the employee's only area and told me that he didn't want to alarm me, but security had alerted him to something suspicious in my aisle. Again, I didn't know what was going on, but he told me to wait there until he came back, so I did. This made me paranoid, and I started freaking out that I'd done something wrong. Had I stacked the items too slowly, or said the wrong thing to a customer? My floor manager returned about 10 minutes later and told me to go with him. I was really freaking out at this point, as I knew something big must be going on. He led me into the surveillance room where the guards played me some video footage. As it started, they told me to watch the woman. It was of me working my shift. On it, I saw the couple in black loading the chips into their cart. Then I watched them whisper to each other before the man approached me and tapped me on the shoulder. I watched what the woman was doing and I felt so sick to my stomach when I saw her walk around the back of the pallet stacker and climb on to hide between a few of the boxes. I continued watching the footage as the man distracted me by taking ages to look at the shelf and then walked off pushing the cart. The footage continued playing and I saw my floor manager come and get me on it. Then as I left the same security guards now in this room went on the floor and moved the boxes, revealing that woman crouched behind them as if she was waiting for the right time to pounce and with a piece of rope held taut in her hands. As they led her away, I saw her peer at the camera and give this disturbing smile. She had been right there nestled among the boxes. If security hadn't seen her, then I was convinced that something bad would have happened to me. They told me the police had taken the woman away, but there was no sign of the man. Then my floor manager asked if I was okay going back to work. I told him that I felt shaken up and so he let me take the rest of my shift off. It was the woman's first offense, so she was released with a warning, but no charges. It makes me so mad to know she just got away with it. I don't know what that couple wanted from me, or why they did what they did. I just hope they never try and do it to someone else. I never worked the late shift again after that, and whenever a customer spoke to me, I got creeped out. It will come as no surprise that I left that job not long after this happened and have no intention of stepping in a Walmart again. I used to play this game with my sister, where we'd go to Walmart with 20 bucks each and challenge each other to find the craziest item within 10 minutes. We always went to the same Walmart, as it was a short drive from where we lived, and we were familiar with the layout. At the entrance, I wished my sister good luck and then raced off toward the far side of the store as that's where they tended to have their most outlandish stuff. I was searching through this giant box full of animal plushies when I saw this guy leaning against a shelf of toys and just staring at me. I didn't want to be rude so I smiled back at him and then quickly walked off toward the clothing department. I started searching through the racks, trying to find anything with a wacky print on it, when I heard a voice clearing behind me, followed by the words, that would suit you. I turned and saw that guy who'd been smiling at me. He was pointing at a rack with lacy underwear sets on it. I found this weird. I didn't know this guy, so why was he following me around the store and saying creepy things? I didn't want to stay anywhere near him, 
so I turned to leave, only as I did. He reached out and grabbed my arm and said, Hey, it's rude not to reply. I managed to pull his hand off me and quickly walked away, making sure to cut through one of the busier aces so I wouldn't be alone with him if he followed me. I couldn't see him anywhere, so I hoped he'd gotten the hint and leave me alone. I hadn't found an item, but I was too shaken up to look now, especially as the time was almost up. So instead, I just decided to leave as quickly as I could. I always met my sister back by the car, so I walked out to the parking lot and hurried over to it as quickly as possible. Upon getting closer to the car, I noticed my sister wasn't in it. She had the keys, so I just lingered around it and mumbled for her to hurry up under my breath. After a few more minutes, I pulled my phone out to call and ask her where she was. She answered telling me she was in a line at checkout. I looked over at the store as our call ended, and that's when I saw that creepy guy. He was leaning against a shopping cart return and staring over at me. I started worrying, as my sister was about to come out of the store and walk toward me. I didn't want him grabbing her like he did me. I tried calling her again, but she didn't answer. My gaze darted back and forth between the exit and that guy. Then I saw my sister holding a tub of ice cream and walking across the parking lot. I quickly turned to the side, in hopes that the guy wouldn't catch her making eye contact with me and figure out we knew each other. I kept on watching him and hoping he stayed where he was. When my sister was closer to the car, she started calling to me, and I saw his eyes widen. Then I saw him begin to walk forward, toward my sister. I shouted at her to hurry up, and she just stopped walking and laughed at me. She must have seen the panic in my eyes as she turned and saw that guy walking toward her. His pace was steady, but he was reaching into his jacket, and he had this determined look on his face. My sister started running and I put my hand on the door handle while she fumbled in her pocket for the keys. I was so relieved when she pressed the key fob and we both got inside that car and locked ourselves in. That guy just stopped walking and smiled at us. He stood there and watched as my sister threw a tub of pizza-flavored ice cream at me, then we drove out of the parking lot. In the rearview mirror, I saw him take his hand out of his jacket. He was holding something, but I couldn't make out what it was. He waved at us, and then he just stood there watching us leave. I told my sister what happened, and she seemed concerned. Then she looked at my arm, and her eyes widened, and she told me I needed to look at it. The spot where he'd grabbed me had a cluster of red blisters all the way around it. They hadn't been there before. I don't know why that guy did what he did, or why my skin had such a bad reaction to his touch. All I do know is that I haven't been back in that store since, and I don't think I ever will again.